one, two, three, four. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about down the neck rolling back up. We're going to take a beginner's bluegrass chord progression and look at how do we string together some rolls, some licks, and some walks between the chords to give our back up some movement but that doesn't get in the way of the lead singer or the soloist. So this is a big topic and I'm going to break it down note for note um, what I'm doing in the back up but more importantly I'm going to talk about the why of why did I choose these rolls and why did I choose these licks to show you how I would build basic backup behind a soloist. This is a good example of, let's say I kick off the song on the banjo, you know, and I want to keep the energy level up through the first verse, I'm going to do some down the neck rolling backup, maybe instead of going into some vamps or something where you would lose some of the energy and I might want to do some vamping later in the song, but I want to keep the energy level up through the first verse. So this would be a great way to do that with some down the neck rolling backup. And again, the goal is to not get in the way of the lead singer or the soloist. So here we go. Here's down the neck rolling back up. All right, so let's break down this down the neck rolling back up in the key of G. Let me play the first two measures and then I'll break it down. One more time. Okay, so we're gonna start with kind of a generic forward roll. We're gonna hit the open third string with our thumb of our right hand. Then we're gonna go up to the fifth string and do a two forward rolls, five, three, one. So T-I-M, thumb index middle there. We're gonna do that twice. So the whole measure sounds like this. Then your thumb comes back down, hits the third string again if you wanna loop it. That's kind of what I call the generic uh, forward roll. We're just gonna, hit, we're hitting the third string and then we're just doing a forward roll using that for backup a lot because it doesn't really get in the way of the melody line. There's not a lot of melody there. That's kind of why I call it the generic forward roll. It's just something that kind of pulses in the background. Just looping that one measure. And the one thing you got to notice about that is how I'm using two thumbs right at the beginning in a row to help me play that first pause. So I'm hitting my thumb and then I'm bringing my thumb to the fifth string. That's going to actually help me play that pause where I'm using two thumbs in a row there so I don't do it too quick. One other slight variation on that is you could do thumb middle to start it. That'd be, that'd be straight eighth notes, but I like putting that little pause at the beginning. Um, just It's a quarter note, so it's one, two, and three, and four, and. So we're gonna use that roll, that kind of generic four roll a lot in this down the neck rolling back up. Okay, so now let's look at measure two. We're gonna hit the open third string, and then we're gonna pinch the outside strings five and one. And then we're gonna do a two, three hammer on the third string with a forward roll, so T-I-M strings three, two, one. Then we need one more note to complete the measure, so we're gonna hit our thumb on the fifth string. So let's play measure two, so it's First two beats are quarter notes, so it's one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, let's play one and two together. One more time. Okay, so let's break down what we're doing in measure two there. We're basically, we're get, we need to get up to a C chord by measure three. We're playing this little rolling lick to get into that. Hear how it's, it's going to resolve to that C in measure three. So it's kind of a banjo um, kind of variation, basically on a, like a guitar walk or something like a, you know, instead of walking up the notes of the scale, you know, G, A, B, C, 
notes, I'd be walking straight up the scale. One, two, three, four. We're basically doing a banjo version of that where we're, we're just using a roll and a hammer on. So it's the same idea. It just We're just adding kind of a little what I would call more of a banjo flavor. So we're basically using that little hammer on roll lick to walk into a C chord. That's really important in, in starting to think about down the neck backup. And any backup really is walking between the chords, kind of leading the listener up to the next chord and and being aware of, of your note choice and how that affects the sound of the backup. So notice how we're rolling into that. Okay, so that's the beginning of measure three and we have to hit that the beginning of measure three with our index finger of our right hand because we just played a thumb at the end of measure two. So you can't, you can't bring your thumb up there to start it. You have to start with your index finger. Going into my just standard C chord one and three, you could leave your second finger off if you want to, or you could put your second finger down on the second fret of the fourth string. Either way, I'd probably leave it off, you know, at the beginning. Especially if the song was a little bit faster, you don't have to try and get them all down right away. Okay, so let's play one and two one more time, and then we'll go into measure three. Now with our index finger, we're putting our third finger, third finger down on the second fret of the first string, and then we're going to go up to the fifth string and do two forward rolls, five, two, one, five, two, one. So T I M twice. So uh, measure three sounds like this. And you start with your index finger again if you want to loop it. what I would call the generic roll on a C chord, just like we were doing in measure one. That's kind of the one on the G chord, the generic roll. This on the C chord works really well. We're looking for stuff that doesn't have too many licks and melody lines. Remember, this is something you play behind someone that's singing, so you don't want to, you don't want to add too many licks right away. You want to add a nice kind of rolling background that doesn't get in the way of the melody line. So, so kind of look for those generic, what I call, again, what I call a generic sounding roll where you're not playing, you know, a lot of melody notes, at least to start. Um, you can play those around the vocal lines, but when someone's singing, you kind of want to just add a roll in the background that doesn't interfere with what they're doing. So here's measure three one more time. And then for measure four, we're going to go into a forward reverse roll on our C chord. So we're going to keep your left hand down. We're going to do strings five, two, one again. Now we're going to hit the open fifth string. And then we're going to come backwards first string, third string with your index finger, second fret on the fourth string, and then open first string. So let's play measure four. One more time. And kind of a cool thing we're doing there is you notice I took off my third finger at the very end, hit an open open first string. That's very uh, Scruggs, a Scruggs style banjo lick where you're almost going back to the G in measure five, of eighth note early. So I think he just did that. I'm not sure exactly why. My guess would be it just helps on kind of a faster song. You just take that note off a little bit early. It helps you get back to the G a little bit quicker. So that's just a style thing. Um, that I've seen Earl do a lot. He would also do it going into a C chord and, and add that third finger a little bit early. You might have seen that in other songs. But let's try measure four one more time. You can also notice how we're using that roll to walk back down to the beginning of measure five, which is gonna start with the open four string. So we're using that, that right hand roll The notes that we want to hear are... So look at the end of measure four. The reason we're doing that is it helps it walk down to the, to the beginning of measure five. We're using notes in the scale. Same how we walked up to the C chord of measure two, now we're walking back down to the open four string. So that's a small subtle thing, but start thinking about that when you're creating these backup licks and using scale notes to help you walk around and I'm basically embedding those into the roll. So 
One more time, here's measure four. Now we're gonna hit the open fourth string. This is measure five. And then we're gonna go up and do two forward rolls, five, three, one, five, three, one again. Very similar to measure one, except we're just starting with the four string. Right hand's exactly the same, except we're just hitting the four string to start. Actually, practicing measure one and measure five back to back would be good practice if you just wanted some rolling on a G. We're looking for those notes, remember, and those rolls that don't really interfere with the melody line. You could sing something on top of that, and that wouldn't really get in the way with what I call a generic sounding roll. So, um, measure five, again, one more time. Open four string. And then we're gonna go two forward rolls, five, three, one. Okay, now here's measure six. 